Despite everything that has happened last year, 2021 was the best year for corporations since it was the most profitable year since 1950. New data shows earnings jumped 35% in 2021, while workers got an 11% bump. You can't call that year a bad year when profits are at their peak in 70 years. Now you know why we have so much inflation. Even in 1971, when the United States abandoned the gold standard, profits didn't surge this much. But the problem is that not everyone is profiting from this surge. 45% of Americans don't own a single stock. These people didn't just miss the opportunity to profit from this enormous surge, but also felt the effects of massive inflation, which is really unfortunate. But even the 55% who own shares in the stock market don't own much. Most of the stocks are owned by a small minority. The wealthiest 10% of American households now own almost 90% of all US stocks, a record high that highlights the stock market's role in increasing wealth inequality. That's the nature of capitalism. There is always going to be wealth inequality. We have tried multiple systems over the centuries, but we came to a conclusion that capitalism works the best, because Soviet Union's experience with socialism was enough to let the world know that a centralized economy isn't sustainable. Even communist China has realized that early and integrated capitalism within its economy. So, if you want to succeed financially, if you want to be in the top 10% of who owns most of the stock market, if you want to master the game of money, then give this video a thumbs up and let's dive in. Number 1. Capitalism There are a lot of reasons why people are struggling to become financially free, but all of them come down to one basic reason. They don't understand or embrace capitalism. What is capitalism? How does it work? Why is it so important? Capitalism isn't complicated. It's as simple as it could be. All you need to know about capitalism is the capital. Those who have the capital keep getting wealthier, while those who don't keep getting poorer. That's why you keep hearing things such as, the problem with the society today is that the rich keep getting richer and the poor poorer. Because that's how it's designed to be in the first place. And you don't get out of capitalism by reading books, or getting better grades, or working harder. Yes, all of these steps can help you to build the capital that will keep making you wealthier, but not necessarily. There are some out of many other actions that you can take to build that capital. So, if you are thinking or planning to become financially free, you should ask yourself a straight and simple question. How do I build capital? Everything else is irrelevant. The moment you answer that question, you will have a clear guideline on how to get financially free. The good news is that there is only one way to do that. It's by saving money. Either you are going to do that by getting a high paying job, starting a business, or taking a loan. It doesn't matter, you gotta do what works for you. Some people are so good at the game of money that they can take millions of dollars in debt to use it as a capital to make a fortune and then give it back. Others short stocks in the stock market, which is also one of the ways to use leverage to build capital. But building capital is not enough, it's just the first step. You should also learn how to let that capital work for you. Some people are good at saving money, they can easily save for a wild wedding or an expensive vacation or a car, but then go back to where they started. That's why you should learn how to invest that capital. Once you do these two things, you're going to become one of those rich people who constantly keep getting richer. Number 2. Risk is the foundation of capitalism. When I explain to people what is the stock market and why is it important to invest, the first thing I hear is that it's risky. Why would I do that? What if I lose my money? It is weird that people want to make money but are hesitant to take the risk to do that. 
you can keep that capital under your mattress but as you keep spending it it will run out and you will go back to where you started but by taking some risks and letting it generate some income you can let it grow indefinitely any form of investment does include some level of risk the only way to avoid it is to know the future which is impossible but what is possible is trying to predict the future based on the facts that we have today. That is how we can take calculative risk. And even then, you can get it entirely wrong. For example, investing in crypto is much riskier than the S&P 500 because one consists of hundreds of pretty stable companies while the other is volatile and unpredictable. However, at the same time, with crypto, you can double your wealth overnight, while it's impossible to do the same with the S&P 500. That is why sometimes you can make a fortune with pure luck. The market could be so risky that you can either going to make a fortune or lose everything, such as in the case of Bitcoin back in 2010 or Tesla 7 or 8 years ago. Number 3. Capitalism is great when you're disciplined and hardworking, and horrible if you're not. Capitalism isn't great for everyone. It is really bad if you're weak and disciplined, because the system rewards those who take risks and work hard. That is why it leads to a lot of wealth inequality, since we are not born equal. We are born with different talents and interests. If your talent is highly demanded in the market, you will be rewarded accordingly, and vice versa. That is probably one of the flaws of capitalism. That is the reason why pure capitalism almost never exists. It's always some form of mixture of capitalism and socialism, especially in Europe when you have high taxes, but in return, decent public transport, free healthcare together with free education. Even if you take the US, you have public schools and community colleges that heavily rely on government funds. With pure capitalism, no society can survive. Even the military is a form of socialism. You can't expect everyone to build a private army to defend themselves. So we pay taxes to sustain a functioning military that protect us all. We can debate forever that capitalism is far from perfect. And that's absolutely true. Capitalism has never been perfect. It always had its flaws. There are lots of ways it could be improved. But the fact is, we live in this system. And changing the system doesn't happen overnight. It takes decades, an entire generation, to create any meaningful change. But time isn't waiting for you. So if you're aiming for financial freedom, you should learn how to win at the game of capitalism as it's today and not how it should be. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.